I have a confession to make. In my high school, college, and law school years, I cut a bunch of classes in order to play games. So I can sympathize if you're a student during lockdown, attending online class, and thinking, why can't I be gaming right now? I mean, come on, it's online class, you're already at your computer, no one can see what you're doing. You can log attendance and play at the same time. It's a victimless crime. Except it's not when it goes public as it did with a viral video around two years ago when a LaSalle student forgot to turn off his microphone while he was attending online class and playing Warzone at the same time. Come on, Patch, get that 30. See you. This is the story of Get That 30 Bro and the fallout from that. If you haven't seen it yet, pause this podcast, Google it, then come back. <laughs> I have to admit, it's pretty funny. Come on, get that 30, get that 30, bro. And I'm not gonna lie, watching the prof reminded me a little bit of C-3PO from Star Wars. You know, a little prissy, but proper and dignified. I've been teaching for 33 years now as a part-time faculty member of the Department of Decision Sciences and Innovation Department under the Ramon V. Del Rosario College of Business. And my areas of expertise uh, include family business management, fashion entrepreneurship, and human resource management personally. And the professor in question just seems a little lost with this online thing, with this gaming thing. What is going on? Bastos, now, I'm a professor also. I used to teach English and now I teach marketing at the college level, at a well-known university. But I'm also a lifelong gamer. So it's easy for me to sympathize with the student. Unlike the professor who has no context, not that I guess that would make it any better, but certainly it just adds to the confusion. He isn't a gamer and he has no interest in that world. The game that your particular student was playing, I think it's a shooter, it's Call of Duty. Um, do you play any computer games like in your spare time? Oh my god. Oh my god. No, N- not, not a gamer. No, I, I, uh. Absolutely not. I, <laughs> I, I did not even know. Of course, I kind of heard about gaming at the time, but I didn't know the, uh, the, exactly what it was. When the viral video came out, and then you know, uh, apparently, I think that one of the iconic lines there is "Get that thirty, bro." So you know, it's something in game. Did you ever, or did somebody tell you? Na actually, what he's uh, so laser focused on, na, to the exclusion of everything else, including your class, is this like an item in the game, or like thirty kills, or something? Um, did did it ever pique your interest? Na ano ba tong "Get that thirty"? Bakit ba sobrang obsessed si student dito? Um, unfortunately, I didn't really care. Of course, I had to ask what that phrase was, mm. what that sentence was all about. But after that, after knowing what it I didn't really care. My only focus was the humiliation I felt, the invasion of my privacy and the privacy of my students, and how long this thing will last. And it's a cliche, but in this short but brutal viral video, you can really see a clash of different worlds, different generations, and how tech has made everything topsy-turvy. This is uh, an entirely new generation of uh, young adults whose career goals are vastly different from those from my generation, from your generation. There is no concept of lifelong learning. Stability for them is just a word. And if it is a word that they also use, it has a totally different meaning yeah. to stability compared to how I would define stability. Yung the concept of working your way up, they won't understand that. Because as you said, they're very impatient. They like everything now. Younger listeners might be wondering, what's the big deal? The student was playing a game, yes. He disrupted class, yes. But it's not the end of the world. Plus, the professor went viral. You can capitalize on that. Everyone wants to go viral now. And one genuine moment can lead to a career. Just take a look at Uncle Roger. Hiya! 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 But the professor is old school. And the more I talk to him, the more I sympathized with his position. You've only ever seen it uh, once after the thing came out. Yes, only once. And I could not bear to watch myself again. Totally. 
One, he seems very professional. The gamer student not only passed his class but got a decent grade. From the very beginning, I made it very clear to him that your grade for this subject is actually separate. I was able to compartmentalize his uh, performance in class with the incident no mm -hmm. because if you look at the rubrics if you look at the yeah. reading system we were not allowed at the time no? we were discouraged from from including the traditional class standing and i believe uh that incident uh fell in you know into the category of class standing although there are we were also struggling on including online behavior in our handbook at the time it wasn't yet uh, cast in stone. No? They were still writing it at yeah. the time that the incident occurred. So it was all uh, we, we were we were learning uh, as as we were you know going along. No? Yeah. So 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 you know, no? and uh, he he not only passed, he got a good grade. And earning something from going viral, not for him. He values his privacy more than capitalizing on the invasion of that privacy. A couple of months after the incident, a beverage company, he declined to mention which, but after some researching, we found out it was Mountain Dew, offered to have him star in a commercial revolving around the incident. Come on, get that 30, get that 30, bro. Sir, don't get thirsty now. Ito, do ice. My refreshing lemon lime sarap. Yan, yan, yan. 30 or 0, you get yes, back to class. The professor declined and the ad went on without him. Would you like to star in that? <laughs> I said, oh. absolutely not. <laughs> it's a very slick ad starring James Reed, neatly playing on the viral aspects of the video. Instead of get that 30, James Reed, as a student in the online class, helpfully explains what the prof heard was don't get thirsty. And that's the entry point for the soda which the professor character drinks. At the end of the ad, the professor, who in spot-on casting physically resembles the actual prof the ad is based on, is able to cut into the video of the offending student. Something impossible to do in real life. This is wish fulfillment as envisioned by media-savvy younger generation marketing people. Student disrupts online class with his gaming, the product is introduced, and after the prof takes in the product, he not only has the technical ability to make his presence known, literally and figuratively to his student, he also has the confidence to tell the truant to get back to class. And the cherry on top is that it's revealed that the prof was a gamer all along and knowledgeable about the game. <laughs> Are his last words in the ad. This ad neatly encapsulates a bridging of generations, a sharing of a common language through games, online video, and of course, sugar water, the product. In real life though, it wasn't like that at all because perhaps our generations, and certainly I'm closer in age to the prof rather than to the student, are, at least on some topics, unbridgeable. For a younger person, going viral is exciting, literally the fulfillment of a dream for some people. And I won't lie, the videos of Hardware Sugar that have gotten a bunch of views, semi-viral, I guess they could be called, those got me excited too. For the professor though, it was something completely unwelcome. That class was uh, early in the afternoon, and then at 6 p.m., just before <laughs> dinner. <laughs> like, just before uh, dinner. Hours, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, a, a former student, someone who graduated around three years ago, called me up. Okay. And asked me, sir. Sir. <laughs> Have you seen <laughs> your video in YouTube? I said, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I don't have any video have on YouTube. Such things. Yeah. No, oh. I, I've never uploaded. What is this? Sir, my friend from Ateneo, <laughs> I cannot forget <laughs> that sentence. <laughs> my friend from Ateneo shared a video with me showing you yeah. reprimanding a student. Or I said, that happened a few hours ago what are you talking about it, <laughs> eric has gone viral sir uh -huh. what is this so of course i panic already because i'm a very private person i have no social media footprint you know i i i, I don't like it when people know where i am what i'm doing i don't like that so when this thing exploded 
totally my my world collapsed. Mm-hmm. Like that that wall I've uh, so so skillfully built all came tumbling down. Absolutely, and it was mayhem for the next three weeks. Mayhem is a good way to describe a viral moment and what feeds that dopamine high if you're involved is watching the numbers skyrocket. Seeing how many views you've gotten, how many people have shared it, reacted, etc. But the professor is not interested in any of that. He doesn't equate happiness with the number of times strangers have seen this small snippet of his life. To tell you honestly, Anton, I was I didn't care about the number of shares or likes or comments. I never read them. Mm. I never read you them. never read any of the I comments? Only, no, no, I only heard about the comments, both good and bad. Mm. Mostly good, thankfully, mm. uh, but a few bad ones, no. It's not that the professor is against all tech. In fact, he acknowledges that it's a great aid for teaching, so he's not a Luddite. Itong technology na to, uh, reduced the burden as well for mm. teachers. For instance, checking papers. No objective, you multiple choice. My goodness, I don't have to check them. <laughs> this story, though, could not have happened without tech. Key ingredients include multiplayer games, online class, forgetting to mute your mic, screen recording, because this would not have gotten out if this hadn't been recorded and published. To this day, it's unknown who uploaded the video of the class. Especially in the modern world, it's super easy to maintain your privacy. We don't know who uploaded the video but violate the privacy of others. In this case, your classmates and your professor. Because what was done to you was, as you said, an invasion of privacy. It was actually also illegal because you know, it was an unauthorized recording. If you could find out who uploaded that to the public, would you have filed suit? At the time, I probably would have. But now, looking back, no. Enough now. Because I have moved on. Yeah. Totally moved on. So it's just one of those many things that, you know, it's it's all it it's all character building. It's mm-hmm. all part of life. And uh ayun. at the time yes I would, but now no. Specifically, a lot of the trouble can be traced to the online medium for classes. As with many things, a classroom setting is a lot more impactful in person rather than online. And for teachers in particular, it has been tremendously challenging, something I think the general public and students don't really appreciate to adapt to online classes in particular and changing technology in general. One of the reasons why I love teaching okay, is the fact that I can go to school, I can go to campus, I yeah. can dress up, <laughs> I can chit-chat with students in the hallways, we could have coffee or something in campus, all that, of course, disappeared during the pandemic. So many of the things which I think allowed me to be good in what I do was, uh, it, it was snatched, it was to- it totally disappeared. Again, because of the virtual learning platform. Do you think if you have to teach through an online platform, it's very difficult to be a good teacher? Ayan na lang. Well, first of all, if it's if you if, if you will ask me again to go full online, I will decline. So Number, you will decline. No, you. Okay. Yes. Yes, I will decline. It's not for me. Mm. I have to see uh, the the students face to face at mm. least half the time, definitely. And uh, at least for my bag of tricks as a teacher, <laughs> I need to be seen. Yes. I need to be seen. I need to be heard in the same classroom, live, face to face. Yes. And I think, you know, each of us teachers, we bring in our own, you know, set of tricks, you know, bag of tricks yes. say, uh, uh, to the classroom. Because the students constantly evolve, you know, uh, what will appeal to this batch will definitely be very different from what appealed to the previous one and what will appeal to the future set of students. So we also need to evolve. And... Uh, Many of the things which I think allows me to be good inside a classroom, a physical classroom, I clearly cannot do in a virtual classroom. Tech, of course, is value neutral. It's neither good nor bad, so it can't be blamed for this situation. It may have set the stage for this incident, but what ultimately triggered it was a very human and understandable response. It wasn't even the fact that the student was playing games during class time. 
what about that entire thing do you think really struck a nerve with you? Kasi hindi pa to viral eh. Let's just say na it's just the recording. But even in that recording, di pa siya naging viral and you know, it, it hasn't, your, your privacy hasn't been invaded yet. I mean, you know, it hasn't, you, you're, you're not in front of hundreds of thousands of people and this is the situation. But just in that very intimate online meeting, it's very clear already that you're visibly irritated uh, when you realize that the student is not paying attention. Why do you think that struck such a nerve with you? You know, I don't mind students not paying attention for as long as they do not interrupt me. The thing about that incident was I was interrupted because the mic was not muted. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's, you know, if your mic is muted, if your webcam is switched off, I don't care where you are. Just what you're doing. Sleeping, you're yeah. driving. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd be very lucky if you are really uh, listening and watching. Yes. Right? But what to me was the greatest insult was that he did not even ensure that the mic was muted. Mm. I, that was the greatest insult for me. And to be interrupted, e even in my even in my face to face classes prior to the pandemic, even this term, my goodness, I sorry, I had I, I I had to discipline a whole you know row of girls giggling in the middle of my class, which of course you know uh, typically happens. I you know I I hate being interrupted. I I I think it's impolite. It's inappropriate. You can always laugh outside. You know, if you find something funny, if you're not, if you don't like to, I told him, always, attendance is not recorded. So, if you don't feel like attending, if you prefer to play a game or to go shopping or be somewhere else to sleep, do not attend my class. Mm -hmm. But the moment you enter my virtual or my physical classroom, then you are mine and I am yours. Period. And... For anyone to violate that agreement to me is committing the greatest sin. I hate being interrupted, Anton. So, yun. Yun ang nakomit niya. He interrupted. At the end of the day, it was about respect. A basic human courtesy that even in the best of times, we sometimes forget to bring with us. And certainly, we tend to leave it behind entirely when we engage in tech-enabled activities. And I think respect is one of the best things about the old school. Not the superficial respect of respect my post, yung nakikita mong kalokohan online, no matter how ill thought out or poorly expressed that post is, but respect for someone, a group, an institution that genuinely has your well-being in mind. You may not agree sometimes with how this desire for your well-being is expressed, but you can't deny that it's there, that the one you respect cares for you and respects you in turn. The old school is being phased out, in need of upgrades, one would say, rendered obsolete by technology and change. The professor admits he's tired. There was a certain closeness which I felt with my students for a very long time, of course, in a very civil, very, very teacher-student relationship type of closeness, which I enjoyed very much uh, for many, many years, uh, which, interestingly enough, I don't feel it now. Maybe it has something to do, maybe it's probably because also I don't do a lot of thesis mentoring lately. I have to be very honest, I don't get as much satisfaction mm. from uh, from my uh, uh, teaching mm. compared to before. The pay is better today. <laughs> but again, uh, at the end of the day, you know, the money really is a thing. Yeah. Uh, at a certain uh, stage in, uh, in your life, you learn, uh, you know, it's nice, it pays the bills. Yeah. But, iba. And that's a shame. I hope he still teaches as long as he can because we still have a lot to learn from the old school. This was Tech Show But Friendly, Hardware Sugar's podcast. I'm your host, Anton, and this was produced by Nana Nadal. Our next episode will be on January 12 when we talk to a content moderator who has seen the most despicable parts of the internet and come out on the other side. Has he been permanently scarred by the content he saw? What's his mental state like? Find out then.
This is episode one of our new format, and if you like it, don't like it, please let us know in the comments whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on Spotify. Please do give us feedback. It really helps the show and the channel. Thanks for lending me your ear. Paminsan, may nagtatanong kung may kilala ba kaming computer shop na trusted, yung hindi ka lolokohin. Actually, meron. Kami. Full service PC store ang Hardware Sugar. Nagbabenta kami ng PC components. Nagbabenta rin kami ng fully assembled rigs. We clean computers. Kasama na rin yung excellent cable management namin and CPU cooler repasting sa cleaning. We also clean and repaste GPUs. Nasa Makati yung physical store namin and you can also buy from our site www.hwsugar.ph na 100% palaging up-to-date yung inventory dun. Kung in-stock yung item sa amin, available yun sa site. We also ship nationwide. Thanks for watching and maybe one of these days magkita tayo sa shop.